turbulent motions which are invisible to the eye can be seen by the Schlieren camera inside the liquid and also on the surface of the liquid. The physical model comprises a beaker cemented to a flat glass plate. The test liquid which goes into the beaker, in this case paraffin wax, and a ring heater to melt the wax. The optical model consists of a light source, a large field lens, two first surface mirrors, a knife edge, and a camera with a long focus lens. We shall photograph the molten paraffin wax whilst it is heated from below and cooled from above, during cooling only, during crystallization, and again during melting. Now you can see clearly the convection currents inside the liquid. Here now are the corresponding surface deformations. The hills on the surface can be distinguished from the hollows or the troughs by noting carefully the path of the light rays. This is just like telling the mountains from the hollows on pictures of the moon. When the sun shines from the left, you will note that a mountain is bright on the left flank and dark on the right. While in the case of a depression, the darkness is on the left side and the light on the right. Hills and hollows are never light or dark spots, but always junctions of dark and light areas. In our Schlieren pictures, the apparent illumination is from top to bottom. A hill is seen to be bright on the upper side, dark on the lower. To the contrary, the hollow has a darker part situated above a lighter one. Ray number one passes from the light source through the field lens to the large mirror which reflects it 90 degrees onto the liquid surface here shown in rectangular idealized form. Part of the light is reflected back to the large mirror and it passes thence through the field lens to the small diagonal mirror. From here half the ray is intercepted by the knife edge whilst the other half proceeds to the camera. Because only half of the light reaches the camera a grey image of the idealized level surface is formed on the ground glass. Ray number two proceeds as number one did but since it is reflected from an area of the surface which is inclined instead of level, it misses the knife edge completely and all of the light reaches the camera to produce a lighter image on the ground glass. Ray number three is reflected from an area inclined in the opposite direction and is completely blocked by the knife edge. Thus no light reaches the camera and an area of shadow is seen on the ground glass. We are able to photograph movements within a liquid at the same time as on the surface of the liquid and with the same optical system. But to do so, we shift the camera to receive rays reflected from the glass bottom of the beaker. The reflected rays pass through the moving streamers that are on the liquid and are bent by refraction to produce an image of light and dark areas. Again, a hot or a cold streamer is always located at the junction of a light and dark band. Now, let us apply the lesson to interpret the surface. There are humps caused by hot upstreamers. Highlights are seen above, and there are hollows caused by cool plunge lines. The highlights appear on the underside. Heat enters the paraffin from below and passes out above into the atmosphere. On the right, we see hot striae inside the liquid rising in patterns that have become well established, and on the left, the corresponding movements on the surface. 
We repeat after vigorous agitation. A flat spatula is drawn quickly across the bottom of the beaker. Soon after, a hot rising stream appears in the right-hand picture and a new pattern develops, which reaches a steady state not unlike the previous one. The streamers are all converging to a focus about two-thirds of the way along a center line to the left. These streamers are rising as they converge and reach the surface everywhere along their lengths. At the place where the focus or confluence of striations meets the surface, a hill is formed, and this hill can be seen in the left-hand picture also towards the left. In the right-hand picture, streaming rapidly away from the focus, you will notice fainter expanding rings. These are rings of cooled liquid which are streaming down from the surface. Because their departure does not disturb the surface, they are scarcely seen in the picture on the left. Heat is turned off and the liquid cools from above. The layer is eight millimeters deep and the photography has been quickened fourfold. Hot rising striae are momentarily becoming less evident while the circles of cold descending liquid are multiplying. Because this is a relatively shallow layer, the patterns on the surface left resemble those in the liquid right. Moving slowly upward from the base of each picture, you notice gray areas free of descending rings where a coarser pattern is establishing. The change is due to a sudden rise in viscosity of the liquid before crystallization. Lines and troughs are cool areas and it is here that you will see crystallization starting. We repeat with a deeper layer. This is with a 20 millimeter thickness of paraffin and we return to normal speed photography. Although the heat has been turned off, hot striae are still seen rising in the right hand picture at the lower right. At about the same position in the left hand picture, you will see a hill with a bright upper flank. This bright flank tells us that it is indeed a hill. The surface pattern left picture is now giving place to an intermediate pattern. And in the right picture, the rising striae are being replaced by massive descending columns. Sometimes these columns are shaped like dumbbells. The descending columns and dumbbells will be matched in the left-hand picture by hollows and troughs. Few of the many surface markings that you see are hills. Most of them are depressions and can be recognized as such because they appear to be illuminated from the underside. Note that the behavior of the thick layer is rather different than the behavior that you saw with the thin layer. Before, the patterns were arranged from below by the rising hot striae. In the thick liquid, the surface is too far away to be influenced and the patterns are determined from above by the descending cool streamers, which are becoming more and more dominant. layer is taking longer to cool and the camera is operating more slowly. We interrupt the photography for five minutes until crystallization occurs. Watch for the cut. Note that crystallization is taking place along the very channels which we had identified as troughs by their light distributions.
During melting, crystals do not remelt along the channels where they froze in the first place, but above newly formed hot lines which rise from below.